are now entering a bath. is a misconception with entrepreneurs being big risk takers because you have to quit your day-to-day -day job, your day job, and take on this new project and hope that the project works out well. In my experience, uh, this is called a J-curve, a startup J-curve. Actually, most people that just start out a business without any prior experience will undoubtedly experience the valley of death. So at Wharton, we're taught this thing called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And basically, you go through this Mount Stupid, and then you go through the Valley of Death where you have your first great idea with a few friends and think, hey, you know, we're gonna quit our job or I'm going to take on this route. And you have this amazing idea, you maybe have a team or something, and get started on this project. And then throughout that process, when you go down the J-curve, you start to realize, oh wow, this is not as easy as I thought it would be. Mark is not ready for the product per se or you're encountering a problem with financing, you can't fund your project, whatever that is, you know, you're going through this valley of death, so-called, and there are four uh, main concepts in the valley of death, which is one, can you build a product? Number two, do you have enough money to fund it? Uh, three, you know, well-rounded team that can market the product, that can build the product, provide customer service for the product, and four, can you scale this? So once you really, past those four stages, then you can really scale, have a business model set out and scale that project. So in my experience, I would not focus so much on how you can have a perfect financial model, but really build out a minimum viable product, release your product, and pivot your product in the early stages before you do any of that. Then, when you pass the three, four year mark, you hit the trust me, it's complicated stage because then you know you're the expert in the field and you're no longer the person you are four years ago when you just started your business and you have a better understanding of this whole industry and you know the, the hardships that you went through, the difficulties you went through. For me, uh, let's give an example in the restaurant space in the first two years when we built out an MVP, a minimum viable product, Chubby Cattle, and we've encountered different types of problems from you know product fit uh, for the entire market, was were people ready to try out a new cuisine from Asia, how we're we able to tailor that product to the mass market. Uh, we had issues with internal partners. Some partners were putting in the contribution and, um, in terms of time, and they have, we have expertise in certain fields, but not others. So we're able to you know, pivot that, adjust that, so we have new partners, or we change up the roles. Uh, and then on top of that, once we were able to figure out our product, we had the customers, then we'd figure out our financial model, what works for our investors. Now we're at the, the scaling stage where we figure it out after four or five locations, we're able to scale new products, add new franchises, and you know, hopefully pass through the uh, valley of death and be able to continue to scale our project. People think entrepreneurs are big risk takers, but really, I would say entrepreneurs, like seasoned NBA basketball players, they are really good at mitigating risks. A, a real entrepreneur that's been successful is able to tell the difference between a crocodile and alligator. They're able to see what a successful business requires versus you know, a startup that has no experience in what they're doing. So once you get to that point of being able to fine tune your project and see where each step's lack, then you've really crossed the J-curve and ended up where you want to be. So I like to clear out the myth today that a successful entrepreneur is not a big risk taker. Not saying that you don't need to take any risks because like poker or like playing basketball or anything that you do, there's always some type of luck or a product market fit or some type of variance that's in there. They have the secret tips, not really secret tips, but just season and experience in not only the legal perspective, the financial perspective, to raise capital, to be able to raise a, uh, build out a really good internal team, have the right structures to build a successful venture. <laughs>